Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. We're back. Hi, I'm Dave Graveline. Thanks for joining us for this episode of ITTV. We're fresh off our coverage of the 2013 International CES in Las Vegas. If you missed any of the many videos from the show, stop by our site where you'll not only find those CES videos, but three weeks worth of radio interviews. Be sure to check it all out at intotomorrow.com. Imagine a life where you can conjure up a product or device, and then voila, it becomes a reality. Well, I recently had a chance to chat with the creator of a low-cost 3D printer for consumers, Sam Cervantes, CEO of Solidoodle. Check it out. Yes, we're talking about 3D printing, affordable 3D printing. Sam Cervantes joining us into tomorrow with your incredible invention, under $500 for a 3D printer. Sam, welcome into tomorrow and thanks for making it affordable finally. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> Tell us about the Solidoodle. Right, the Solidoodle is a uh, 3D printer, uh, the, one of the first consumer grade 3D printers. It starts at just $500. And it's, uh, Solidoodle stands for two things, uh, affordable and easy to use. So we try to make it uh, a 3D printer that anybody can use. You pull it out of the box, you plug it in, and it uh, just works. Exactly, as it is doing here. We, we've already made a, a chess piece moments ago and, uh, and thought we'd show you that. We're making now a bottle opener, and as Chris gets in tight on the bottle opener, you're gonna be able to see how it's actually forming right before our eyes. And what's cool about this is, tell me about the material that it's using and how it actually comes to life if we're a creative type person and then some. Right, so imagine uh, a hot glue gun. A hot glue gun uh, uses a, a hot nozzle to squirt out uh, a thin strand of hot glue. Well, 3D printing uses the exact same technology, except we use hot plastic. So our printer is gonna squirt out uh, hot plastic in the shape of a, a, an object, layer by layer. It starts with the first layer, it draws an outline of the part, fills in the outline, and then uh, the build platform moves down to the next layer. It's gonna draw another layer on top of that, and layer by layer, you can actually see right here the part uh, comes to life, anything you can imagine. And we use two types of materials. This is, we're actually using right here is ABS plastic. So ABS is a very common, very safe plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Isn't that what Legos are made of? You got it, oh, exactly. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, very common plastic. We also can use PLA, which is a, a fully renewable, recyclable resource. Uh, it's a corn-based plastic. Hmm. Corn-based, we probably have used those with uh, little utensils at convention centers. I know we have a ton of as we travel. But now check out on the computer, you can see how it is coming to life. We had a 3D image uh, that Sam has on his machine, and it's now going to the printer in layers, and we can watch the layers being printed on this with this 3D image. And then, of course, move over to the printer itself, and you see it coming to life again. In this case, a bottle opener, and we can always use a bottle opener, right? Never one around when you need it. And tell me about the creativity that one needs to have. How difficult is it to get 3D images, then be able to print them? It's very easy. It's not difficult at all. Uh, in fact, you don't even need to be able to design 3D parts at all. You can simply download one from the internet. For example, anything, any almost any building in um, Google Earth that you fly around you can see in Google Earth, mm -hmm. you can download and uh, print it out. It's that easy. Uh, if you want to design your own custom 3D part, that's easier than ever before. You could download free software called Google SketchUp and take some tutorials on our website and learn how to use SketchUp in an afternoon. We have 12 year olds using SketchUp to create school projects and, and it's really cool. So uh, designing your own parts or downloading pre-made parts is easier than ever before. And it's very quiet too. I mean, we're standing here right next to the Solid Doodle printing as we speak, and it's not obtrusive. It's doing its job. It's getting its material from the little spool here on the back side. And I hope I won't mess it up if I just sort of lift the spool up a little. Ah, look at that. And you can see all kinds of colors available too. We've got reds and blues and blacks and greens and all sorts of things. So it's really limited to your own creativity, your own imagination. And you can literally print out all kinds of fun things. You mentioned for school projects, uh, for your church or association. How about your business? Wouldn't it be cool to have parts that you design and print on your own Solidoodle 3D printer 
and be able to present to your clients and prospects. I think that's very impressive. And for just under $500, anybody can do it. That's right. And you mentioned SketchUp uh, with uh, Google SketchUp. So it's easy to take perhaps a, a logo and bring it into SketchUp and then it will help you make it a 3D image? That's right. It's as, Creating a logo for your business is as simple as typing out the letters in your font in Google SketchUp and then raising those letters off the page by a quarter inch. It, it's really that easy. Um, you can, you can, if you've never used any 3D software before, you could learn how to do it in uh, about an hour. Wow, okay, well even I have that kind of time and you're gonna get to see what uh, our Andrew and Horatio have been working on here at the studio to be able to come up with some fun things and again you're limited as Sam said only to your own imagination and the Solid Doodle printer for under 500 bucks. SolidDoodle.com will get you all kinds of information. They've got a really cool video there to show you how it works pretty much like this and what we've been showing you. And of course, IntoTomorrow.com will get you there. Sam, thanks so much for not only being a very creative person, but making 3D printing affordable to us consumers. Thank you, Dave, it's my pleasure. As we 3D print all the way into tomorrow. What do you think about the Solid Doodle and 3D printing in general? Is it something that may be useful to you? Is it just a novelty these days? Share your opinion with us in the comments section below or call us toll free via the Ask Dave hotline anytime 24-7, 1-800-899-INTO. That's 800-899-4686. Of course, you can also use our free Into Tomorrow app for your mobile device. And we prefer that. And of course, you get prizes faster too. We look forward to hearing your call on the air. Well, it's time to climb aboard our Wayback Machine as Chris joins us now with our weekly look back into yesterday with This Week in Tech History. Here's Chris. In 1893 this week, Elisha Gray of Highland Park, Illinois patented a machine called the Teleautograph. It automatically signed autographs to documents, freeing up those who would be autographing these things so that they could take care of other matters. In 1935 this week, Leonard Keeler conducted a test of the polygraph machine, or lie detector, in Portage, Wisconsin. It marked the first time that one of the mysterious boxes was used. And this week in 1957, Smith Corona Manufacturing of New York began selling portable electric typewriters. The first machine was a portable of 19 pounds. Soon other manufacturers offered similar models made of lighter weight plastics with a lot less of the sophisticated workings inside. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History, brought to you by IFA, the International Funkausstellung in Berlin, the global trade show for consumer electronics that's rich in its own history. Get more info at ifa-berlin.com. We invite you to get social with us online. Be sure to follow our official Twitter page, at IT Radio Show. You'll get tips from other listeners, links to our weekly radio show notes, and more. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook, fb.com slash into tomorrow. Remember, we often do special giveaways just for our social followers. Thank you, Chris. Well, that wraps it up for this week's ITTV web show. I'm Dave Graveline. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to visit our web home anytime at your leisure, intotomorrow.com, and take advantage of all we have to offer you. We'll see you again next week, right here. Soon other manufacturers offered similar models made of lighter weight plastics with a lot less of the sophisticated frick. <laughs> <laughs>